Let's next real quickly discuss enlarging fractions. Now we'll see later why you need to enlarge. Let me say again, if you're watching these in order, the previous one said always you should, if you can, reduce a fraction to lowest terms. But there is a reason, major important reason for enlarging a fraction. Well, here's how you do it and you'll learn later when you're supposed to. Let's take this fraction three fourths. See, by the way, I recycle. I'm recycling the same pictures and the same problem over and over again. Isn't this great? Not wasting unnecessary ink. All right, let's enlarge this. But see, always, if I just say enlarge the fraction three fourths, well, enlarge it to what? I mean, if I say, if I give you a fraction, say reduce to lowest terms, how many correct answers are there to that problem? Only one. There's only one way to reduce a fraction to lowest terms. There's only one answer. But if I just say, there's a fraction, enlarge it, well, how many ways can you do that? An infinite number of ways. So there's always, when you enlarge, and we'll see this later. I think later's down that way, okay? Later. When you enlarge a fraction, there's always some goal in mind. Well, let's give you some goal in mind. I'm going to enlarge this so that the denominator, the bottom number, is the number 16. So if I'm, <clears throat> if I'm enlarging the fraction 3 fourths to make the denominator the number 16, that means I'm doing what? The reverse of reducing. I multiply top and bottom by the same number. Well, what do I do to a 4 to convert him into a 16? Well, I multiply by 4. So multiply the bottom by 4. Ooh, I'm changing colors again. That's, that's black. But the top demands equal treatment. I multiply the top by 4. Well, what's 4 times 4? 16. And what was it? The bottom. What's the top number? 3 times 4? Uh, 12. There it is. I, ooh, I already knew the answer. I enlarged it. What about something like 7 twentieths? But I specify. Enlarge this into a fraction expressed in hundredths. Now, if I say hundredths, hope I spelled that right. This okay. That means I'm enlarging the fraction. So the bottom number is the number 100. So what do I do to make the bottom number the number 100? Meaning, what do I do to the number 20? To change them into the number 100, uh, I multiply by 5. So if I multiply this by 5, that becomes that. Well, okay, duh. Then I do what? I multiply the top number by the same thing. He demands equal treatment. What's 7 times 5? Well, let's see here. Get my kind of... Oh, yeah. 35. 35 hundreds. Now, just let me say this. If you were to get the number 35 hundredths um, as the, you know, a problem on the answer, an answer to a problem, you wouldn't leave it. You'd reduce it. But I'm saying there are other reasons. We'll see later why you have to enlarge and leave it that way. So just take, you know, put this topic on hold. Know how to enlarge. We'll see later why you need and when you need to do this. One more, just for grins. What? It's a grin. Uh, let's say we have the number... Two fifths, and I want to enlarge that into a number expressed in tenths. What does that mean? It means I enlarge it so the denominator is the number ten. Well, what do I do to a five to change it into a ten? Well, I multiply by two. If I multiply this by two, it becomes a ten. I multiply this by two, and it becomes four. Four tenths. So there we have enlarging fractions. You'll see, I already said this four times later on, you'll see when to do this, but know how to.